entrepreneurship can be really lonely. Uh, ambition can feel really lonely and daunting. And you know what? Life isn't easy either. Um, in this episode, I'm going to share with you four steps ish <laughs> to beat that feeling of loneliness and to give you the opportunity to step back into your power and feel more supported both in your life as well as in your business. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fast Forward with Amy show, the show where we lift your life and business with simple strategies. I'm Fast Forward with Amy, your host and coach, and I'll bring you a new episode every Tuesday. Let's be honest, entrepreneurship can be a really fucking lonely journey. Um, I have felt like giving up, like feeling so alone, feeling so sorry for myself so many times. And I think it's something that all of us experience, especially when you're not working with a team or when shit with your team hits the fan or when you have a client who cancels or when you have problems to solve, the overwhelming feeling of responsibility can often push you to a place of overwhelming loneliness. Entrepreneurship is sometimes a very lonely road to take and I'm not going to lie to you, that is the truth and it might stay like that, but you don't have to keep feeling like that all the time. So uh, maybe you sometimes think, I can't do this. I'm so disappointed in myself. I feel so alone. No one gets who, uh, how I feel. No one can help me because no one has done what I am doing. Uh, why does this keep happening to me? All of those feelings might sound familiar. So let's dive into how we can solve those feelings in about four steps, okay? Um, before we go into that more and more, I do want to say that maybe your feeling of loneliness is not necessarily loneliness, but more of a feeling of fear of failure. So sometimes you feel one thing and you get really itchy and, and like, mm, like that. And it's a really good exercise to ask yourself why you're feeling like that. So often I just feel lonely because I'm cramped with feelings of fear of failure. Uh, and my feeling of loneliness actually comes from a place of not feeling worthy or just not feeling loved, but then that is actually loneliness. So if you sometimes um, struggle with identifying what you're actually feeling, my trick to solve that is to grab a piece of paper, um, like this workbook that I have here right now. It's actually a photo book. I always buy these huge ass notebooks, which are actually not notebooks. And I use those to write down my thoughts because the, the paper is nice and thick and I have something with like paper and notebooks and post-its. Um, and I write down, why do I feel like this? Or when I'm in the car and this is happening to me, I will say it out loud. I learned this from my friend who used to be my coach, Sarah Campbell, who's been on a podcast a few times. And I will just write down, why do I feel like this? And then I just start brain dumping. And at the end of it, uh, I will probably get to the root cause. Now, often for me, that that's just because I feel overwhelmed and I'm lacking clarity in my business. And that's my root cause. But in the past, it's also been that I feel like no one loves me. I'm not worthy, all of that shit. So really great exercise to do if you want some help in working through some fear of failure, perfectionism, perfectionism imposter syndrome. I have created a belief book to get you to believe in yourself more. And you can find that through fastforwithamy.com forward slash belief book. It's, I don't know how many pages it has, but you can even print it out. It's available both in Dutch as well as in English. It's a really, really great manual on helping to help you identify some of your fear of failure things and to work through them with some examples from yours truly. Whenever I mention any link, it's also linked in the description of the episode, by the way. Okay, so we're gonna work through this feeling of loneliness. We're gonna keep it short and sweet. Um, and the first step or the first piece of advice I wanna give you is, it is okay to feel your feelings. And when something really bad happens, you're allowed to feel it on a really deep level. I would also advise you to then go outside for a walk, to work through it physically, like literally moving your body works through those emotions. But the step of advice I wanna give you is not feel your feelings, although you have to do that. It's actually to change your self-talk because sometimes really, really bad stuff will happen but often we kind of just get stuck in thinking everything is negative and staying stuck in a feeling. So sometimes a negative thing happens and I think I forgot what it is. Is it five seconds or half an hour where you are actually reacting to that bad thing that happened? But after that time frame, you are choosing to stay in that negativity. And this might not be what you wanted to hear, but staying in that negativity, continuing to talk about the victim mind like 
I can't do this, why does this keep happening to me, isn't gonna make you any happier. And it will kind of become a self-fulfilling prophecy and you will start attracting more and more negative things. Also because your brain will start getting wired to look more at negativity than at positivity. So start changing your self-talk and look at when bad things happen, feel them, then let them go or reframe it and be like, oh, this client canceled, that sucks, I feel a bit sad, what do I feel? Write it out, work through it, that's the whole feeling your feelings. And then look at which opportunity does this give me? Oh, this gives me the opportunity to work more on my business. This gives me the opportunity to look for a new fun client who's a perfect fit for my business. Start teaching yourself to do that because you are gonna need it in business to become more resilient. So um, when you are saying, I am feeling so lonely, I don't feel supported. One of the things that has really helped me in the past is asking myself, and I, I got taught this uh, by my coach, Sabrina, how does it serve you to keep feeling unsupported? And that is such a heavy question. And this is the second question I wanna ask you is, how does it serve you to keep feeling unsupported? So sometimes we just kind of want to stay in the sad place. We want to stay in the negativity because we've taught ourselves that that is a safe place to be because then we can get some attention. Then we have a really good excuse to eat some extra cookies, stuff like that. So how does it serve you to keep being unsupported? Sometimes that might mean you can keep feeling unsupported and alone because then you don't have to open up to someone else. You can keep feeling unsupported and alone so you don't have to change your ways of behavior because that might be more difficult than just staying in the spot you're in right now. Think about that the next time you feel a certain way. How does it serve you to keep feeling that way? And is there maybe something else going on that you're clinging on to, which might not be entirely the reality? The next step then, once you've already been convinced of the fact that you should maybe allow for some more support. Basically, this is an entire episode of me saying that unless you live under a bridge in a box, you probably have more support around you than you realize. It might be money, it might be friends, it might be paid help, whatever. Um, I'm calling you out, <laughs> unpopular opinion. Many of us have more support than we realize or that we allow into our lives and I am the typical person of this. And I am very blessed with great friends and family, yet I feel so alone often. And the reason I am doing that <laughs> is because I have this whole pattern where I'm like, I'm the strong person, I could do this by myself, blah, blah. But how is that serving me? It's just literally blocking people out of my life. And it's just keeping me in a place of victimhood because I do have support in my life. So I really had to learn to call in help. And that means kind of admitting that you don't have to be strong, which is a very typical Belgian thing to do. It's like, you have to be strong. Opening up is weak. Um, don't be weak, especially as women who want to thrive in this like new culture. It's like, you have to be a strong woman, so you can't be weak anymore. But weakness isn't weak, you know? Weakness isn't bad, is what I want to say. Weakness is also really fine. Softness is really fine. It's the whole yin and yang that we need. So. You gotta learn to call in help. So that means you have to get rid of that limiting belief that you have to do everything yourself and that you always have to be strong. Who said that? Maybe your parents said it, maybe you were taught this at a very early age, but it might not be your thing. So you're gonna have to figure out a way to let that go. Obviously, this is some stuff on mindset, but if this is really triggering, um, go and see someone to talk about it and realize that you can get help. And this can be in the version of paid help. For example, you can pay for your groceries. So I remember <laughs> not wanting to pay five euros for like the grocery delivery or that they were uh, ready to pick up because I was like five euros, that's so much money for five euros. I'll just walk through the store and go and grab everything. Um, but maybe I was just making life harder than it needed to be with that. Um, because in that hour of me walking through the store, I could have already also been working or I could have just not walked through a store that was very overstimulating to me and just had an extra hour of time for whatever, maybe taking a bath or something. There is always a cost to staying in the victimhood. And sometimes it is okay or often it is okay to just facing the fact that it is okay to call in help. And that might not just be paid, that might also be free. When you are stuck with a problem, you can ask a friend to help you. Even now at work often, um, I've actually had to learn this in work a lot. In the past year, I've gone from 
or past two years, I've gone from working by myself to working with a team. And it took me about six months of working with a team of four until I started being more okay, admitting that I couldn't do something or admitting I needed help. So right now, actually, someone on my team is really helping me out um, because I'm like, you know what, guys, I can't do this. I need some extra help. And it used to feel really uncomfortable for me to admit that because I was like, I am the boss. I should be the strong person here. I should be the smartest person here. I should know how to do everything. But what kind of pressure is that? <laughs> and when I behave like that, I'm also teaching my team to behave like that. So they will never ask me for help, but I would love to help them. I would love to teach them, but I am setting the wrong example. So where people think it is weird to open up, it is um, weak to open up, it will actually allow for a space where other people feel more comfortable about opening up too. And maybe someone else needs your help and you're like, oh, this I'm really good at, I would love to help you. Because as humans, we actually want to help each other. Um, yeah, asking for help. And that brings me to the next step is actually involve people in how you feel. So m me, my parents, we have a great relationship. Obviously we all have our issues, but my dad and I are much alike. My mom and I are less alike. Now you gotta know I was sick for years as a kid. My mom took such great care of me. Um, we love each other so much, but as I am such a strong headed person, and I'm like, I have a lot of dominance in me, a lot of influence, I wanna do all of the things and I'm always like struggling with my boundaries and all of that stuff. Um, sometimes I don't really include her in how I feel. Thus, I feel really alone. And my mom is always like, but then come over or let's do this together. And I'm like, I don't necessarily wanna do things together because I'm like, I'm all alone in this feeling and I don't wanna burden anyone with my stress. So what happened, I think, a year from now, I'm already getting emotional. I was so stressed out. And at a certain point, I just couldn't keep it in anymore. So I called her <laughs> and on the phone, I started ranting and I'm like, I'm so sick of trespassing my own boundaries. And it's so difficult for me to stick to my own mind because I'm always people pleasing. And I was like ranting about all of these things I struggle with. And she was like, I had no idea whatsoever that you're struggling with this because to me, you are always just such a strong person. And I was like, no, <laughs> these are my biggest struggles. I could use some advice, but my mom isn't gonna just give me advice when I don't ask for it. She also knows that I don't like criticism. So it's a really thin line to walk for her. I think for any mother daughter relationship probably. But I started realizing then like, oh, I can't really disappoint my mom for starters and she wants time with me and I want to be heard, but I can't feel supported by her if I don't allow her in on my feelings. So I, and, and last night I had dinner with my parents and I had some time alone with my mom and I just started telling her about all the things I'm worried about. And I feel like she feels way more connected to me because what I don't realize is when I don't do that, she only sees the tough exterior. She only sees the Amy who's doing way too many things and she needs, I need to chill the fuck down and she doesn't know why. And that is one of the biggest lessons I've learned in this past year. By involving people in your context, involving them in your why, you can literally get so much more done, but you will feel so much less alone. I had a stressful weekend. I told some people about work, uh, at work about it. I even started crying professional or not, whatever. But now they know why I am on edge because I literally just asked someone before the recordings because I heard them eating and I'm very bad with eating sounds. Sorry to have to ask you, but could you do that in the kitchen? Because I'm very triggered by the eating sounds because I'm so tired because I haven't slept a lot these past days. It's really triggering to me. It's not annoying objectively, but to me right now it is because I've been stressed out. Now that person saw me crying yesterday so they now have context as to why I am the way I am right now. I'm not always like that. But so there is much more understanding. And that's one of the things we've done in our team. No one in our team has to open up more than they want to, but there is so much more mutual understanding and respect because we get where the other people are coming from. So that's what I started doing more with my mom, more with Jessica lately. So I noticed with my business partner in my second business, Alpha Women, Jessica, I started noticing that Jessica often doesn't know what's happening in my brain because I feel like I'm the strong person. I gotta be contained. Other people can do like chaotic stuff and talk about stuff, but my ideas and my thought patterns, I'll keep them to myself. 
but the result was that she often doesn't know how I feel. So I started, and when she's helping me with this, I started practicing talking more out loud about stuff and just being like, hey, don't want to do anything with this, but I, these are the th thoughts that have run through my head because she often, that have been going through my head, she often doesn't know that I've actually already thought things through five times, which can make her feel like I'm not interested. But maybe I'm really stuck with a decision and we're, as business partners, to her it might seem like I'm not doing my job or I'm procrastinating. Maybe I am just stuck and I go into the pattern of I need to solve this all alone. But maybe she has the solution. And if I can just admit that I don't know the answer, she can help me and I won't feel alone anymore. So I gotta say, I felt way less alone in these past six months of entrepreneurship than I've ever felt before. So I've always felt way more alone. And it's not just because I have a team, it's, it's, it has to do with me talking to my brothers. I always, it's more tears coming in. I have three brothers and they live, Jesus. And they live in Amsterdam and London. And being the only girl with three brothers is a challenge. Um, but I don't know why this is so difficult, but a few months ago, I went through my breakup, which was really difficult. And my brothers came over and I often forget that they are there to support me, but they're guys, so I kind of need to tell them they need to support me. <laughs> um, and because I need to tell them, I forget that they're there, literally. Sometimes I go through stuff and literally one of my brothers would be perfect to just call, but because of the distance, you know, you don't think about it. But with the breakup, um, they supported me a lot. And then about a month ago, something happened and I forgot they existed again. And they heard from my parents like, oh, but why didn't you then pick up the call? And so one of them just like called me and talked with me about that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, they actually want to be there for me, but I don't really allow them because I don't ask for what I want and need sometimes. But if you don't ask for what you want and need, no one can give it to you. And that is such a big lesson we all need to learn. And that is what I mean by how is it serving you to keep feeling unsupported? Because then you can blame other people, because then you can stay in a victim mindset, because then you can postpone your dreams. Then you can choose to stay unhappy, maybe. For me, that was a little bit the case. So maybe choose to feel supported and start looking for more ways to feel supported by telling more people how you feel. And the same thing happened with my friends. Um, I have a group of friends of 10 friends that I've known since high school. I love that like I got professional hair and makeup done and I'm just like crying in front of the camera. You know, it's just real and raw, I keep on going. <laughs> and um, after my breakup, I told them, but I was launching at the time. So I kept showing up on camera because obviously I couldn't just stop running my business and stories and stuff are my business, but they see my story. So although I told them factually, I'm going through a hard time with the breakup, then they just saw me like thriving on stories and blah, blah, blah. And I started noticing that they weren't really reaching out. And in the beginning I felt, I, was star I started to blame them and I felt very unsupported. And then I thought to myself, maybe ju they just think I'm fine and they feel like I'm such a strong person always and I never allow help or I never show the softer sides to them. So maybe they, they just don't feel like they need to check in with me. So I reached out and told them like, hey guys, I just wanted to let you know, like, I really need to make some support because it's really not, I'm not okay. And this, um, now they might have done a lot with that or not. That doesn't really matter. What I want to tell you is it's not necessarily about the support you might actually get from that. It's about opening up and being vulnerable, allowing yourself to speak it out loud. That in and of itself is going to make you feel less alone because you will be more authentic and thus true to yourself. Because the loneliness might not always be coming from other people. It might come from you not admitting how you truly feel and admitting to yourself which kind of help you need. This was a great therapy session for me. <laughs> and um, yeah, basically by 
opening up, you're also teaching people that you might not be as strong as um, you make it seem, but being vulnerable doesn't mean you're not strong. It just means you're human and we're all human and humans like to be there for each other and they like to take care of each other. That's the way we're built. So um, what I want to tell you is with this episode, as I already said, unless you're living in a box on a bridge, you probably have a bit more support around you. If you're anything like me, then you realize. And I realize that I am very blessed. <laughs> wow, saying that word. I'm very blessed actually with a really great support system. But I could also be fucking that up. And I've been really teaching myself. These are my own patterns of retreating. Also when I'm like dating someone or whatever, I tend to retreat. I tend to go into whole savior mode. I need to go to more therapy, by the way, to work through this. Um, and you might recognize some of this stuff. So maybe you had an aha moment. Maybe your mom and you butt heads. And now you realize maybe your mom doesn't only need the happy version of you, but she just wants to know what's going on. That's what happens happened with me, my mom. Whereas my dad, he doesn't really necessarily want to know what's going on. He wants to like talk through ideas and stuff with me. And my mom just feels, I think, just way more connected to me when I open up. And uh, I feel way more connected to her. So shout out to my mom. She's amazing. I always talk about my dad on the podcast, but I gotta say moms are the MVPs. So um, open up. If you do anything today, Decide to share more how you feel, be it in a work context, not disrespectfully, but just like open up more about how you feel so people understand where you are coming from. You will see that they will be much more amenable to what you're looking for or what you want because they now understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling. So yeah, let's do that. Um, I cried so much, fun times, uh, about my brothers. I might have to send them this episode. Maybe they feel the same way. I don't know. I should give them a call. Um, I actually already discussed I'm visiting my one brother and visiting my other brother. So it's going to be great. Um, I'm always here on Tuesdays with new episodes. <laughs> Tag me on Instagram if you liked the story. Let me know in DMs or write it on your stories what you took away from this. I hope something resonated. Remember to... It's okay to feel your feelings. Everyone feels alone in entrepreneurship. It is the toughest journey of self-awareness you'll probably ever take. Um, but don't stay there. Don't stay in the negativity. Take ownership and start opening up more to support. Talk to you next week, Tuesday, uh, on the Fast Forward Amy Show. And uh, have a happy day.